Hey guys, this is Henry from Obedia and today we're going to be talking about the audio setup in Studio One. As you can see, we already have a Studio One sound opened. And if we're going to work on the audio setup, we need to make sure that we have the Preferences window open, which we can open by clicking in Studio One, Preferences. And here it is. Here's our Preferences window. We have five menus, as we've explained before. We're going to go with the one in the middle called Audio Setup. Here's where we're going to be working on. Let me tell you, um, configuring the audio setup is a task you should always do when you open any digital audio workstation, simply because uh, the audio setup lets you configure the interface you're going to be using and the block size or buffer size. Uh, these two um, operations are going to be crucial before you open any uh, session or song uh, on any DAW. So let's start. Uh, the audio setup menu has two tabs. One is called audio device and one is the the other one is the processing tab. We're going to go to the audio device tab first. So um, the first couple options are the playback device and recording device. Basically Studio One is telling you that you can select what's going to be your playback and recording device or as some other DOS call it your input and your output um, your output and your input device. Sorry. Uh, you can simply select it by clicking on the drop down list and selecting your audio interface from the list that it's going to show. For the case of this tutorial, uh, we're, we're using the aggregate device as both as playback and recording. In your case, you should select your interface and most likely it's going to be the same for playback and recording. The other area here on the audio device tab is the block size um, configuration. So, um, by the way, the block size is also called um, buffer size on other digital audio workstations. So what are we supposed to do here on the block size? It's, it's pretty easy actually. As a rule of thumb, if you're going to be recording, you want to have a low block size or low buffer size. We're talking about 32, 64, 16 samples. When you're mixing, you want to have higher block or buffer sizes. The reason for this is when you have uh, lower block sizes, you have less latency, so it's easier to record. But when you have higher block sizes, you have more latency, which makes it really hard to record. But you have higher; um, y y it's going to be better for mixing because um, the 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 higher the the block or the buffer size, the less clicks and pops you're going to have when you start adding plugins. So as a rule of thumb, if you're mixing high block sizes if you're recording low block sizes and I'm going to explain you why right now we have five t 512 samples of block size and Studio One cal can calculate the input and output latency on on that block size as 18.2 and 12.2 milliseconds let's say that I switch this to 32 samples for recording purposes you can see that my input and output latency are now way lower 5.7.35 uh, for input latency and 1.36 for output latency. This is good for recording because this latency is not going to be audible. Now if you go to let's say 2048 samples then you're going to have way more latency that's going to be audible and it's going to be really hard to record with that latency. We're gonna, so we're going to leave it back to 512 how we had it before. Now you also have an option to release audio device and background this is totally optional. I never do it, but if you feel like any application audio or any audio device in the background could be um, affecting in a negative way the way your Studio One software is working, you might want to turn that on so everything in the background gets released. So then you have all your CPU power, uh, all your yeah, all your computer power um, only in Studio One. Now we can go to the other tab, which is the processing tab. This is this tab basically deals with what Studio One calls dropout protection. This is a very cool feature that Studio One has included, and basically it protects your um, digital audio, all your bits from being dropped during the conversion process. I typically leave this as minimum because um, I don't feel I really need that protection. I've never felt any, um, I've never felt any problems with Studio One w while recording. But 
if by some reason you're feeling like there's something being dropped out, you can raise this to low, medium, high, or maximum. Keep in mind the more you raise this, the more latency you could add. Uh, as I said, this is just this a pattern is going story, to show so me a completely new feature video. in Studio One. I'll just leave minimum. So, um, these are the two tabs of the audio setup uh, menu of the preferences window in Studio One Four. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any other questions on Studio One or any other DAW, please, please call us at Obedia at 615-933-6775. Thank you very much. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.